The promise of God fulfilled, the glory of God revealed. That is the story of Christmas. During the weeks of Advent, we have been hearing from the book of Isaiah the prophet. And those readings during the Advent season were filled with comfort, reassurance, hope, and fulfillment. For example, in the third Sunday of Advent, we heard that the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf deaf shall be cleared, the lame will leap like a stag, and the tongue of the mute shall sing. The words spoken by Isaiah show that the coming of the Messiah will be a time of liberation and exuberance and of joy. The burdens of life will be eased. New light will dispel the darkness found in people's lives and peace will come to them as well. That is what the coming of the Messiah would bring. And tonight's gospel tells us how these things came about by proclaiming the Christmas story. It's interesting that the story has a very formal, almost somber opening. Where we ask are the angels? Where is the star? Where is the celestial choir? Where are the things that help us to get ready for what is about to be proclaimed? But that beginning serves a very important point. In telling us of the decree of the Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar, St. Luke reminds us that the birth of Jesus is an event for the entire world and for all people. Now, of course, it is necessary to explain how Mary and Joseph found their way to Bethlehem at the time of their son's birth. And this is rather briefly done. There is to be a census. People have crowded into the little village of Bethlehem. There's no room at the inn. And so the baby that is newly born is laid in a manger. But these details anchor the birth of Jesus in history. Yet the only people that we encounter in this gospel story tonight are the shepherds. Were they the only one to hear the angel's message? We are not told. But we do know that throughout the gospel, Some people listened to God's good news and responded in faith, while others heard the same words and turned away nonetheless. The shepherds, though, do hear the message, which echoes the joyful, confident message that had been proclaimed earlier by the prophet Isaiah. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. That promise of peace runs through the entire Old Testament and now finds its fulfillment in the very person of Jesus. He, the Prince of Peace, will establish a kingdom of justice, love, and peace and offer those gifts again and again throughout his public ministry. Peace, of course, is one of the greatest gifts that God offers to us all. But the giving of that gift of peace involves obedience 
and openness to God's plan. We have heard proclaimed anew this holy night, the promise of God fulfilled, the glory of God revealed. If we want to experience in a profound way the real meaning of Christmas, then we will have to look into our own heart and discover what it is that Jesus means for us. Do we have that sense of obedience and cooperation with God that brings about a sense of peace, a sense of assurance in God's great love? Is it Jesus who gives us justice, love, and peace in our lives? And is his wisdom a guide for us throughout this life's journey? Is he a companion to support us in difficult times? Is he a friend that that we can thank when we know that we are greatly blessed? And as with all who are our friends, do we feel drawn to make time to be with him? These are the ingredients, the spiritual ingredients of becoming one with the Prince of Peace and being able to proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men and women of goodwill. So there's the question for us to reflect upon tonight as we gather in faith, in trust, and in love. What does Jesus mean to me? Because whatever Jesus means to me is precisely what Christmas will mean to me. We ask ourselves, does Jesus influence me in any profound way? To those here present tonight, to all who are listening, you have put yourselves in a position to respond to God in faith and obedience, to be touched by the eternal word of God made flesh, by the Prince of Peace. May we open our hearts in faith to welcome the Savior of the world and to allow God's love to change and direct our lives.